17 years, 9 movies, some we cherish, some we despise. Nobody can play the same character forever. So here we go. One last time. Hey there guys, how are you? It's me, the Canadian Movie Buff, with a review of Logan. This is Hugh Jackman's ninth and final performance as the titular character and the second Wolverine movie to be directed by James Mangold. Set in 2029, mutants are all but extinct. Wolverine and Charles Xavier are living off the grid and keeping a low profile. And then an 11 year old girl winds up in their care with powers similar to that to Logan's. Now dogged by the military, her last hope of safety is a haven that is nothing but a rumor. And like always, Logan's the best man for the job. There's a lot of buzz surrounding this movie at its world premiere. They were saying things like, Oh, it's going to win Best Picture, it's the best superhero movie since The Dark Knight. Now that I've seen the movie for myself, I can say that the critics were... not entirely wrong. Given that this is probably the last time we'll see the character on the big screen for a while, there's high expectations for Hugh Jackman to deliver. When he first started playing the character, Tobey Maguire was Spider-Man, the MCU was unheard of, it was just a dream, and the Batman franchise was pretty much dead. This is the role that brought him to stardom and he has given us a performance that will be remembered for years to come. He's playing an older, wiser, and a bit more cynical Logan. He doesn't heal as easy, he's got scars over his body, and he has not aged well. It's hard to see a beloved character that couldn't be killed slowly breaking down and getting weaker. But that sets the overall tone of the movie, a retired hero who has lost everything and is on the verge of hopelessness. The only person who matches Jackman in the acting department is Patrick Stewart, playing Charles Xavier for the last time. Cynical and 90 years old, his mind is starting to break down. He's got an unknown brain disease and his body is becoming very weak and frail. He's barely stable and Logan is just waiting for his inevitable death. It's really depressing, but that's what makes this movie great. As a character story, it doesn't rely on any of the superhero tropes we've come to know over the years. There's no bad guy with plans to destroy the world, no army of aliens or robots, no CGI monster to fight at the end. Just a deep look into characters that we've seen so much that we thought we knew them. Watching these heroes grow old and more human is what gives this movie its gritty flavor. It has the same style as old Clint Eastwood movies with maybe just a smidge of Gran Torino. To that, I give the writers full credit for a job well done. In fact, let's give them a hand. Scott Frank, Michael Green, James Mangold, thank you for giving us a well-crafted story and a complex look at the characters. One more thing I want to point out before we move on is Daphne King who plays Laura, the little girl that Logan and Xavier protect. She doesn't speak a word for the majority of the film and most of the sounds she makes are grunting and shouting as she slices and dices the bad guys. Yet her performance gives me confidence that she can pull off the character in future movies should the occasion arise. For a movie that's meant to be heavy with emotion, there were quite a few comedic moments. I don't have a problem with that, they all made me laugh, none of them felt forced, and they added a bit of levity. But when you consider the depressing and dreary tone of the movie, it feels out of place. Plus, the story does feel like something we've seen before. We have to get this person to this place because this guy is coming after us! So there was that feeling of deja vu, but they managed to avoid any of the cliches that usually come with this type of movie. The final point I want to make is, this movie was missing... something. A little je ne sais quoi. There was a small hole that the movie didn't quite fill. It was probably the missed opportunity of bringing in Magneto or Sabretooth. Admittedly, it would have been cool to see Leif Schreiber reprise his role, but that would mean recognizing X-Men Origins as canon. And the more we let that movie fade into obscurity, the better. There was a certain character where they could have easily replaced him with Sabretooth, but for whatever reason, they decided not to. I can't say with absolute confidence that this will win Best Picture or even get nominated, and I don't want to jump on the Oscar bandwagon that is surrounding this movie, mostly because we just had the Oscars, but it does have potential for several awards. Hugh Jackman and Patrick Stewart deserve acting nominations for their incredible final performances, Scott Frank, Michael Green, and James Mango deserve Best Original Screenplay, Mango also deserves some recognition for his directing as it is absolutely amazing, and maybe some other minor awards just to tally up the number of nominations. Other than the minor complaints I had earlier, this was a fantastic way to say goodbye to Hugh Jackman's Wolverine.
When you put together a superhero that has this much caliber in its acting, directing, and writing, you end up with Logan. A movie that is truly a total incredible-ast. It doesn't need to win any awards, but if it doesn't get any nominations, there will be riots. Alright, that's my review of Logan. Have you seen it? What did you think about it? What's your favorite performance of Hugh Jackman as Wolverine? Leave your answer by commenting down below. And as always, this is the Canadian Movie Buff saying I hope you had a fantastic weekend at the movies. See ya!